Now I realize that the way that I feel about my body has very little or nothing to do with my actual body. Instead, eating disorders are actually mental disorders and that the more that I work on myself and my internal characteristics, the more that everything else around me uh, matters less or becomes secondary. <laughs> Hey girl, or boy, or non-binary person. Today we're gonna talk about something that's really deeply personal to me. Um, I do want to put up a trigger warning. Um, if you're suffering from an eating disorder, this the content of this video might trigger some of that. So I do want to put that out there. Um, but. Uh, I wouldn't be able to talk about this stuff without getting emotional, but I feel like through therapy and through just a lot of my own journey through all this, I think I'm ready to talk about it. And my hope is only that I hope somebody out there maybe resonates with this and maybe it helps somebody out. So welcome back to the AM with Amy and let's get into the makeup part, yeah? So I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me some questions and if you want to be featured in one of these videos with your questions, um, just follow me at Amy underscore Lee and I usually do a call out on my stories by the way I am using primer and I don't normally use primer but when Pat McGrath sends you primer you use primer I also got this new tinted face oil from Kosas and it's literally an oil so you have to shake it um, I find that this is a little bit too sheer um, for when I want a little bit more coverage so I add it in with the hourglass vanish seamless finish foundation and I find that this is way too thick so putting these two together is an awesome combo so let's start off with the first question maria.hdez asks when did you first start feeling self-conscious about your body and do you have a specific memory so I grew up being a tomboy I think up until I was like 9 or 10 I only wore Nike and I played a lot of outdoor sports with my brother and my dad um, because my mom was always working but then when I started to get my period is when I really started to love fashion and I started to discover text blogs um, like uh, Song of Style, um, Fashion Toast, Rumi Neely, Brian Boy, Suzy Bubble, Lookbook.net and I became obsessed with fashion through the internet and I remember watching um, or going on style.com which doesn't even exist anymore and just looking at runway shows I feel like that was for me the defining moment when I started to see my body as something other than just the vessel that's keeping me alive and healthy um, because a lot of runway models um, I feel like I don't know who told me this but they said that runway models are so thin because they mimic um, the frame of like a garment rack because clothes look better when they hang loosely or something the more that I grew an affinity for clothes and fashion and runway fashion specifically um, I feel like my relationship with my body began to become more negative it was almost like inversely proportional by the way I'm using the Prisme Libre Givenchy uh, setting powder and I love it because there's like a quad of setting powders I've actually never used a puff before I've always used the brush but it's in here so why not looking back I feel like I began displaying body dysmorphic behaviors pretty early on I remember that the biggest insecurities I had and um, still to the to this day have um, but not nearly as insecure as I used to be but I used to be severely insecure about my thighs and my upper arms and when I say body dysmorphic behaviors um, if you don't know what body dysmorphia is body dysmorphic disorder is a mental disorder in which you can't stop thinking about one or more perceived defects or flaws in your appearance a flaw that to others is either minor or not observable but you may feel so ashamed and anxious that you may avoid many social situations so I say that looking back I was displaying body dysmorphic behavior because I remember from ages like 12 to at least 16 I only ever wore shorts because I felt that my thighs were too big for pants I remember anytime it would get cold or during the winter I would just always put on black tights and people never saw me wear pants and this went on for four years I was like I never ever owned a pair of jeans and nor did I want to go jean shopping I remember going jean shopping as a kid would make me feel so worthless and almost like devalued in a way because I just felt so ugly because of my thighs and looking back on photos of me wearing like 
constantly tights with um, shorts like my body looked fine and nobody like no it was like it was almost like a figment of my imagination for example this photo I remember when I took it was really triggering my body dysmorphia because I saw my thighs and I was just so upset and I didn't want to eat or on the opposite side of the spectrum it would make me want to eat and binge eat a lot I've never personally struggled with an eating disorder um, I do feel like if I were to skew on any disorder it would be binge eating then slowly I remember I found one pair of these jeggings felt like they just were like they were like passable like in my head I I was like oh okay I can like wear these um, pants and I can like pass that's literally the workings of my mind um, I bought these $40 jeggings from Zara and they're black and I only ever wore those jeans I remember I would wear them until they would rip until they would tear tear and every like two three years when that would happen I would like freak out and get so anxious because it's like I would have to find a new pair that would like replace that and for probably up until I got into college I did not own a single pair of like light wash or just normal denim jeans because I just felt like um, my thighs like everyone would see them and I just felt like my body wasn't made for them and looking back like my thighs were fine and like even to this day I can see the body dysmorphic behaviors come up because I do have some hang up about white jeans um, like white skinny jeans I don't own a single pair and thinking about it actually makes me a little bit anxious like to even like try them on in the fitting room and um, that makes me really sad. I think up until I was 19, I was super uncomfortable and really, really anxious wearing anything that would show up my upper body. Like I would not wear tank tops. Um, and if I did, it would be like a really slimming black uh, spandex material one. And like a couple years ago, like four or five years ago, honestly, like four or five years ago, you would not see me at all in a top like this like seeing a top like this right now would cause so much anxiety and make me feel as if everyone was staring at my arms and what body dysmorphia is the best way I can explain it is when I look in the mirror I see a completely different body than what actually is it just skews the way that I see my body parts um, and it honestly is such a negative place to be um, because it comes from a place of like self-hatred I believe um, and also just like not being able to see things clearly that brings me to my next question which is navy ashetti x s ashetti I don't know I always find other women of my weight beautiful but never myself how can I try to overcome this so I can 100% relate and I thought this question was so important because this is probably one of the biggest ways I know that I display body dysmorphic behaviors because when I see my body or my weight on other women or my arms or my thighs on other women I don't see any flaws with them I remember I was out with my friend and I was telling her about my upper arm insecurity and how I just hated them and they made me feel awful and I just felt like they were um, just not good to look at and I remember she was like Amy we have the same arms do you think my arms look that bad and she was genuinely asking me out of curiosity because she was like whoa like we have the same arms like are my arms bad like and I was just like whoa unknowingly I feel like she checked me and it really just put into perspective how uh, negatively I was seeing my own body and not seeing it for what it was and on top of that even if my arm is larger than what I think it is I don't understand why that's a problem as well so it's a lot of like mental chatter in my head and a lot of mental back and forth and um, I still struggle with this on a day-to-day -day basis and it's like I think the best way to overcome this is to constantly keep yourself in check like catch yourself when you, you the fact that you're already asking this question means that you're already one step ahead most people is that you're aware that you love and can celebrate your weight on other women but not yours and self-awareness is the first step in getting better um, back when I was high school I had no idea that I was doing 
I, I didn't know that I was so trapped by my thighs that I could only ever wear shorts and tights and Back then like I thought that was just like oh I had to live this life forever by the way I'm using the Huda palette and I use this sparkly glitter kind of like a neon yellow all over my lids And then I also add in this like marigold yellow um, Because we're gonna do kind of like a euphoria bronze golden stay gold pony boy type of look today Then I'm gonna use this lime crime Venus 2 palette Palette, and I'm gonna use this beautiful mustard and I'm gonna use a brush and just kind of like define the outer eye I believe yes I'm gonna use a flat shader brush Eunice O asks balancing inevitable appearance base demands as a youtuber slash influencer I feel like the reason why I struggle so greatly with my body image and talking about body confidence is because um, as an influencer I feel like I'm here to talk about accepting your body and being body positive I'm so pro body positivity um, and I think at the end of the day the reason why it's so hard for me to talk about this and open up about my own struggles is because I sometimes feel like a sham I just feel a lot of like guilt and shame I also felt like super like like a poser like in a way like oh like I'm over here championing pro body positivity and I still at the end of the day look in the mirror and I still see parts of myself that um, you know create self-hatred and insecurity and um, it's like it's a multi-layered issue about how negative I feel about this entire topic and then on top of that like yes like being as a as an influencer I do feel like there is a value placed on the way that I look um, because I am in this beauty and like fashion space and of course everybody knows that social media and influencing um, they have greatly affected like young people's minds and how we believe that people should look um, I feel like I grew up on tumblr and I remember there are a lot of pro Anna blogs, which is like pro anorexia. Like literally, the hashtags would say pro Anna and like thinspo. And I think for a long time, when I was like 15 to 16, I was like reading those blogs. I was reblogging those photos. I think the culture had an obsession and still has a lingering obsession with the thigh gap. Which, if you knew anything about your body, like the thigh gap actually has more to do with your body and bone structure rather than whether you're thin or not. Because I have friends who are extremely thin, but their thigh touch because of just how their bone structure is made and then also on top of all that I'm like Korean so South Korean beauty standards are insane to uphold double eyelids be pale skin be extremely thin most k-pop idols are extremely thin and as a woman in this patriarchal society we're made to feel as if our intrinsic value relies upon the way that we look you know aging and our youth uh, we're like not as valuable without it uh, if we have wrinkles if we're fat. Our society makes women or has women to believe that our intrinsic value is based upon all of these external factors and so I think on top of like being Korean American and being a female and being an influencer and being the type of influencer that I would like to be which is like someone that I needed when I was 15 going through um, this weird journey of my body and accepting it. It's like a very multi-layered issue. I'm gonna line my eyes so I'm gonna do an orange liner on top so I'm gonna tight line with the orange one and doing yellow or gold on the bottom line and these are my favorite crayon or gel eyeliners they're from Marc Jacobs next I'm gonna line the top of my eyes with this liquid liner from NYX it's like 10 bucks I got it from Ulta it's vivid brights the vivid brights collection and it's in the color VBLO8 vivid delight um, and it's like this little brush tip and I'm gonna just do my winged cat eye eyeliner is on melanie ashnas how do you ease your mind especially on days when you're struggling with body image i find that the more that i work on my internal world the more my external world stabilizes now i realize that the way that i feel about my body has very little or nothing to do with my actual body instead eating disorders are actually mental disorders and that the more that i work on myself and my internal characteristics the more that everything 
else around me um, matters less or becomes secondary and I think that I believe that everybody should do whatever makes them happy um, and so like plastic surgery I feel like um, if for you if that one alteration or that one cosmetic procedure is truly gonna be the uh, end-all be-all fix to everything like you're gonna actually feel better about yourself then by all means go for it but what I find oftentimes is that plastic surgery is kind of like a band-aid to what's going on inside and I feel like um, that it's a lot harder and a lot more difficult but it's a lot more fulfilling to figure out what the root of the problem is about why you dislike yourself and I find that that no matter how large or skinny or whatever I get I don't ever want to bla place my value on something that's external because at the end of this day this is a vessel and this goes to die when our soul does not like the more that i work on my kindness and compassion and empathy deep empathy for others as cheesy as it sounds the less weight that my physical appearance has on my mental health so internal work that i've been doing is honestly just like everything i've been sharing here on this channel with you throughout the years which is journaling meditation getting to know myself quieting the noise in my brain and going to therapy and working out and learning about nutrition and holistic health and holistic healing um, healing from inside and out I realize that it all has to do with my mental health and your mental health is connected to everything just like a beautiful nice luxury car you wouldn't feed it poor gas and I try to remember that that nutrition and diet have a huge part in the way that I feel about my body eating poorly makes me feel shitty and then makes me feel poorly about my body whether or not I'm gaining weight or whether or not I'm actually looking physically different I have these gems I got from Amazon and I'm gonna add them onto my face <gasps> me in my final form okay Kelsey V Butler asks how to deal with go to the gym and lose weight versus I just need to love myself complex I think that these are not mutually exclusive I think that people who love themselves and love their bodies take their bodies to the gym and get them moving because it's about your physical health yes but which then in turn affects your mental health I think it's learning to reframe your brain on how you view uh, working out and eating healthy instead of thinking of working out as losing weight and it's going to physically change the way you look think of it as it's going to make my mood a little bit better which then will be kinder to my physical body and think of it as more beautiful and then not only that but realizing that there is no morality on food and there is no morality on working out like I think the moment that I took away the issue of morality on things like working out is good for you and not working out is bad for you and this food is bad for you and this food is good for you um, it's just learning to feel like I'm gonna eat this food and that's what it is I'm gonna go work out and that's what it is and have the actual effects um, influence your life rather than placing such an issue of morality on things like making myself feel so guilty for having a plate of fries it's like no you're just gonna eat those plate of fries there is no issue of morality on that it's not good or bad I mean objectively it might make you feel terrible um, but that's something that I can accept rather than place um, morality on it I feel like uh, learning to take away that and learning to associate loving yourself with just moving your body and not about losing weight or about having to look a certain way or have to reach a certain goal it's like i used to have all these before pictures on before pictures of my naked body on my phone um, not ever really having the after photo and i realized that's because there is no after photo sophia siri asks were you ashamed of your body during sex and lose all the magic a lot of you did write in about physical intimacy and how you feel about your body and if i ever felt self conscious and honestly my mom told me this story early on when I first started having um, sex she basically told me in college that her roommate was like a ballerina and she was like super skinny and she always had a boyfriend over and my mom you know just being super blunt as she is um, she like asked her like oh does it ever bother your boyfriend that you're so thin or that you're really skinny 
and her roommate basically just said and my mom was telling me this at the time that I was like starting to have sex um, about and I had questions about my own body and my mom her roommate said that no like he's excited to be just having sex with me like he's my boyfriend like he wouldn't be there if he didn't like if he wouldn't be there in that moment with me if he didn't like my body and this story honestly really stuck with me because I think it's so true and I think more women need to hear it it's like the person that you're being intimate with in that moment obviously is attracted to you and obviously enjoys your body um, because they're there with you you know being sexually active and I think that's so important to remember if they do say something awful about your body um, the body does not need to change your partner does someone asked me oh my boyfriend says stuff about my boobs like should I like go do something about it and I said no the boobs stay the boyfriend has to go because that's what the real issue is Pretty much done with the makeup look. This is Shroom by Lime Crime. Okay, last question. Stixer.nea asks, thoughts on skinny shaming? I personally get made fun of a lot for being skimpy slash fat. While our society skews to having a thinner body as positive and as the achieved goal, um, I think it's just as fucked up to say eat a burger as it is to say eat a salad to someone because much of the way that we look um, has to do with our genes, like our body is due to our genetics and um, I feel like skinny shaming, body shaming is body shaming. Knowing my friends who have gone through skinny shaming their whole life, it's like not much that they can do about it. I also think it's important um, to be mindful of the fact that being skinny doesn't necessarily bar you from the same opportunities, jobs, positions, the way that being overweight does. For example, weight discrimination is legal in 49 states and um, on top of that, being an overweight woman bars you from so many opportunities and, and so so um, I think body shaming is body shaming and that we should obviously be very mindful of what we were given um, and just because you might be the idealized norm doesn't make it any better to uh, make someone feel negatively about something that they honestly really can't change. Please be kind to one another and um, I hope down below we can have an awesome discussion about our own journeys. Thank you so much for being here with me today. If you liked the AM with Amy, I have a whole playlist at the end of this video so be sure to check it out and be sure to write me with the hashtag the with Amy with any questions you've got and um, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.